Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless psalm 46 10 be still and know that i am god i will be exalted among the nations i will be exalted in the earth my advice to you today is to take this time that god has given us in his grace and mercy and be still and know that he is god and that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today, as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. So when the history of cable news is written, I'm assuming anyone bothers to write it, but if it ever is written, Glenn Beck will have his own chapter as possibly the greatest synthesizer of big ideas ever to appear on camera. And a lot of people made fun of Glenn Beck over the years for that, but if you go back and watch the tape, you will find out that maybe more than any other person on television, Glenn Beck got it right again and again and again. We thought tonight is the perfect opportunity to hear from him. He's the co-founder of Blaze Media. He's just written a book called The Great Reset. I've got a couple of things here for you. Um, let me just go through. I'm going to bring, a, I think, a different perspective to this. We have the banking crisis. They say it's fine. It's just beginning. Yesterday, we had the Saudis and uh, Brazil and um, uh, China enter a deal to where the petrodollar is over. Brazil and China are going to uh, trade in their own currency. That's the beginning of the end of our currency. That means a dollar collapse. That yes. means we become Venezuela. We will have war with China. We will have war with Russia and Iran. Uh, we have the restrict bill. We have social media and our NSA and everybody else in bed with each other, silencing people. And now this week, we have a new a gun grab that they're trying to do. Um, Biden and his family taking money from the Chinese. What do you think this Donald Trump thing is really all about? The America that we knew, the fundamental transformation that started in 2008 is finished. We are no longer viewed as a superpower. What this is all about, I believe, is trying to inflame this country is in They've wanted violence from the right from the beginning. They can't yeah. wait it. They need it. Look at January 6th, the day they're letting the shaman out of prison because it was all trumped up. Thank you, Tucker Carlson, for uh, uh, revealing this. The day they're letting him out, they do this to Donald Trump. They want you to strike out. Why? Because then they can close the cage. I'm going to make another prediction for you, uh, Tucker. You said I got it right. Well, everything I've been talking about since 08, this is the time. I'm going to make a prediction. By 2025, we are going to be at war. We are going to have a new dollar, a currency that it probably is coming from the central bank. We'll have a currency collapse uh, and we will live in a virtual police state. I know that might sound crazy to a lot of people. It's not far off. The, the Bill of Rights is gone. Nobody is paying attention. Where are the Republicans? Where are the decent Democrats that can see this is, this is insanity? Is God through with America? Jeremiah 18, 7 through 10. The instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up, to pull down, and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. And the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. I believe the world is experiencing major birth pains, and what is about to be born is the seven-year tribulation. 
Jesus says, it will be the worst time in mankind's history, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. I don't know how much time is left, a day, a week, or ten years, but I do know this. We are in the season of the Lord's return. I believe most of us will see the rapture and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Is humanity in danger from new artificial intelligence technology? Some tech experts fear it could be. An open letter signed by the leading voices in tech is calling for a six-month pause in development, warning that language-based models like chat GTP, which generate human-like responses, could one day attempt to replace humans and even try to rule the world. Tech leader Elon Musk warned about artificial intelligence in this 2018 interview. The danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Um, and nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. The release of OpenAI's chatbot has sparked a multi-billion dollar race between Microsoft and Google to offer competitors. I, I'm afraid um, that the whole world, and no exaggeration, 18 months from now, the world as we know it could be unrecognizable. Christian author and faith leader Johnny Moore is asking religious leaders to support the pause and ask the tough questions about ethics and morality. If that means if we press pause on the innovation for six months or nine months or three months or three weeks for that matter at this pace of change, um, we, can, we can do the work needed. In the last days, the book of Daniel prophesied that knowledge would increase. Daniel 12.4 but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Knowledge had to increase for future prophecy to be fulfilled. The biblical knowledge we have today is because of the increase in technology. This is a pretty good indicator that Christ will return very soon. There are many prophecies in Daniel's time that could not come to fulfillment because the technology had not yet been invented. That is why Daniel was told to shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. One of those prophecies is found in Matthew 24, verses 21 and 22. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Flesh is the Greek word sarx, which means flesh, body, human nature, especially a human being. Matthew 24, 22 can be translated like this. And unless those days were shortened, no human nature would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. If Jesus did not return and shorten the days, there would be no human nature saved. Either mankind will merge with artificial intelligence, or artificial intelligence will completely destroy mankind as the dominant species. AI expert Eliezer Yudkowsky warns the open letter doesn't go far enough, saying literally everyone on earth will die if AI is allowed to advance unchecked. The reality is, whether we're ready or not, uh, is no longer a relevant question. The, the question is, the technology is here, uh, what do we do moving forward? Concerns about the technology range from mass unemployment as AI replaces workers, to a widespread loss of privacy, to weapon systems that independently decide who they should kill. Interpol has issued a new report warning the technology could be misused for fraud, cybercrime, disinformation, and social engineering. What scares me the most is that people start to trust it so much that we don't, we don't even investigate it. We just trust that this machine is so intelligent, it must be putting out truth, when in reality, it's actually just a really good con artist behind a machine. God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. God is omniscient. He is all-knowing. God is omnipresent. He is present everywhere. Satan, in sharp contrast, does not reflect these divine attributes. Satan is very powerful, more than any man, and more powerful than most angels. Satan wants to be like God, and even exalts himself above God, as we read in Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. 
I will be like the Most High. Satan is not anywhere near to being equal with God. The only way Satan can be all-powerful, all-knowing, and present everywhere at once is through technology. When the Antichrist comes on the scene, he will undoubtedly use this type of technology as part of the beast system. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Several fast-moving and potentially violent tornadoes threatening millions in the South and Midwest. Dozens of tornadoes reported across six states. In Arkansas and Kentucky, states of emergency declared. A deadly and devastating twister hitting Little Rock. And late word tonight of a roof collapse in Illinois. Tonight, catastrophic tornadoes hitting multiple states. Storms like this one caught on video in Harper, Iowa. It's coming to the road. Back up leaving trails of destruction throughout the Midwest and South. More than 70 have been reported injured, with at least four <laughs> reported fatalities. These storms on the ground in Arkansas, Iowa, Illinois. More than a dozen states under tornado watches at some point tonight, and at least 80 million Americans on alert. Outside of Chicago, more than two dozen people injured and one killed from a roof collapse at the Apollo Theater caused by the extreme weather. Go, 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 go! Earlier, the emergency unfolding in Little Rock, Arkansas. Take your tornado precautions now. That's You're looking live right now, north of Little Rock. That is the lowering, and there's a tornado in there. This is not a drill. This is Can confirmed. It's, it's going to hit the radio tower. Go. Storm chasers tracking the massive, fast-moving twister as it heads into the north side of the city of 200,000 people. This neighborhood taking a direct hit. Downing trees, shearing roofs, splintering homes, and tossing vehicles everywhere. I hear glass breaking, all of this kind of stuff. Man, it, it come through so fast, within a matter of seconds, it's just dead silent. And then you come outside and you see all this. Little Rock's fire chief telling ABC News there are significant injuries. Uh, the ambulances are pretty constant as they're getting called out here to uh, search through these homes. ABC News learning tonight that residents are possibly stuck in damaged homes. Meteorologists at our ABC affiliate, KATV, watching as the tornado tracks through their hometown, overcome by emotion. We have friends and family who have been affected by this, that um, homes have been destroyed. And so if there's hesitation, we're trying to keep our composure, too. Uh, but again, we want to send a message to the residents uh, that we are here for you. We understand what's going on. As this plays out in Little Rock, President Biden visited Rolling Fork, Mississippi today, where they are still recovering from the deadly tornado outbreak that hit one week ago. The president warning of the coming danger. Some of these communities are again facing the threat of severe weather in just one week later. I want to urge everyone here to listen to local officials and be prepared to take shelter. Parts of the same area in Mississippi are at risk once again tonight. And a community that hasn't recovered yet, the western part of Kentucky, devastated by tornadoes more than a year ago, when a twister was on the ground for almost three hours and tore through more than 150 miles. That area under threat again. These storms leaving a trail of disaster and heartbreak. The increasing number of natural disasters and terrible storms have many people wondering who controls the weather, God or Satan. Some point to the descriptions of Satan as the prince of the power of the air in Ephesians 2.2 and the god of this world in 2 Corinthians 4.4 as evidence for Satan having control over the weather. An examination of scripture reveals that whatever influence Satan has over the weather is restricted by God's ultimate sovereignty. The devil, our adversary, must be taken seriously. We should acknowledge his existence and his limited power over the secular world. At the same time, Satan, a defeated fallen angel, is very powerful but not divine, having only the power that God ultimately allows. God controls the skies and the rain. God controls the wind. God has power over the clouds. God has power over lightning. 
God is in control of all things, including the weather. Through his providence, God provides for and protects his children. But he also permits Satan, demons, and mankind to exercise their limited will to commit acts of sin, evil, and wickedness. We may not always know why evil acts or natural disasters happen, but we can be assured that God is working all things together for his purpose and for our good, as we read in Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Catastrophic tornadoes tearing through the Midwest and the South. At least six people were killed, including two in Arkansas, where the governor has declared a state of emergency and activated the National Guard. In central Indiana, three people were also killed when a tornado touched down late Friday evening in Sullivan County. The powerful storm swept across the state and leveled homes and crushed cars. The storm also left a trail of destruction in Illinois, Missouri, Tennessee, and Iowa. And the threat is not over yet. According to the National Weather Service, more than 28 million people remain under tornado watch today. The winds are still going strong here in Iowa as authorities assess the damage from the tornadoes that ripped across the state yesterday. There were evacuations and rescues, but this massive, nearly 900-mile-long storm system brought deaths in at least three states. One person was killed and dozens more hurt when a tornado plowed into a crowded theater in Belvedere, Illinois. More than 250 people were attending a heavy metal concert when the twister collapsed the building about 70 miles northwest of Chicago. It's crazy to think. I've gone to so many shows here. I know so many friends who go here all the time, and it's crazy to think that the roof caved in. An afternoon tornado also shredded Little Rock, Arkansas. It touched down in the western part of the capital city, leveling homes and a shopping center. Meteorologists describe the storm as catastrophic. Witnesses describe a fast-moving, high-pressure storm. Weather warning came on, and then the lights went out, and we heard everybody running downstairs. And it came over, and the pressure in my ears dropped, and it got really weird. It was devastating. It was, uh, say, if you was in an airplane and, and had to take a uh, higher altitude, and your ears seemed like they're about to blow. That's what it felt like. It was a lot of pressure. It was quick, though. At least two people were killed in Wynn, Arkansas, just to the west of Memphis. The tornado flattened the town's high school and left residents there without power. Two tornadoes on the ground. Storms hammered communities like this all throughout the nation's midsection on Friday. And they come less than a week after a tornado killed at least 21 people in Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Psalm 917. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. An out-of-control wildfire scorches Spain's northern coast. The rough terrain, high winds and low humidity are hampering firefighters battling the flames. Spain's wildfire season started early this year. In the eastern Valencia region, more than 4,000 hectares of forest were destroyed last week and 1,500 people were forced to abandon their homes. They've only just been allowed to return. The UN's Environment Agency says climate change will spark a 30% increase in severe wildfires by the middle of the century. In Spain, they're already dealing with the fallout. The country's wildfire season now runs from spring to autumn, not just during the summer. And Spain's meteorological agency says temperatures in March have been up to 14 degrees higher than normal. It's a new reality people are struggling to adjust to. With warmer weather forecast in the weeks to come, scenes like this are likely to play out again for many more months. Cyclone Freddy battered Mozambique twice in a matter of days, destroying more than 130 homes and displacing an estimated 184,000 people. Water facilities, clinics and medical centers were damaged, accelerating the spread of cholera. While the cholera outbreaks regularly occur in Mozambique between October and April of every year, with more than 21,000 cases currently and 95 deaths, this is the largest outbreak in the last 20 years. It's not only cholera. The World Health Organization is also warning of a looming hunger crisis. 
The UN estimates about 3.1 million people are in need of food assistance. Access to safe water and sanitation is still challenging, and about one third of the crops have been destroyed. For Mozambique, climate change is not a future problem. The effects of prolonged severe weather patterns are already evident. Hours before sunset, dozens of women line up for food in this camp for refugees in Somalia's capital. They're hoping the volunteers have enough. One hot meal is all that Hadik Adule Mohammed will get, but it's worth the wait. The food will feed her six children. The family once owned farmland and goats in a village near the capital. But successive years of drought have forced them to leave. I recall the Ramadan fast we had in the past when we were enjoying and prospering. However, this year we're living in a camp without plastic to cover us from rain, without food to eat, thirsty and experiencing drought. Hadik Mohammed is among more than one million Somalis who've left their homes in search of help. The UN says the drought killed an estimated 43,000 people last year alone. It needs $2.6 million to fund humanitarian aid here, but less than 20 percent has been pledged. Five consecutive failed rainy seasons has withered crops and millions of farm animals have died. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16:8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. You had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Chaos, confusion, and panic. The injured and dead are everywhere. Money and food is being distributed to the poor, a tradition during Ramadan. The stampede broke out as this site in Karachi was overwhelmed by crowds of desperate people. Those behind us didn't stop. They kept pushing. I was crushed too. The last thing I remember is that my sister fell on me. I tried to find my sister, but I couldn't. When the crowd cleared, I saw both of them, my sisters, lying dead. Women and children were killed as the crowd got out of control. There have been other stampedes at food distribution centers this week, but this was the deadliest. Money was being distributed among the poor. Today, a large crowd had gathered, which resulted in a stampede. Efforts to control the crowd made things worse. Some people drowned a nearby stream, others were trampled underfoot. Inflation is at a 50-year high and families are struggling to survive. The cost of basic goods like flour have soared nearly 50% this past year. Families of the dead say they're tired of political infighting and are demanding solutions. We are fast approaching a time known as the Tribulation that Jesus says will be the worst time in human history as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. We are currently witnessing events that will continue to become more frequent and more intense until God pours out his final judgments on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes the price of food being so high and scarce that it will cost a full day's wages just to barely get enough to eat as we read in Revelation 6, 5, and 6. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. 
In this prophecy, it will cost a day's wages just for a loaf of bread. We are not in the tribulation period yet, but we are getting extremely close. So socialism, of course, is failing again. A new look at its impact on Venezuela shows years of promises, you know, to fix inequality and hyperinflation is now making inequality worse, putting people in poverty and starving them to death where they're probably eating squirrels. You know, creating the haves and have nots they claim to be solving. Yet the dopey left still wants more socialism. My next guest escaped Soviet occupied Poland and members of his family were tortured for refusing to cooperate with the socialist regime. He's also the author of a book, Disclosure, I had a role in publishing, The Pledge to America, One Man's Journey from Political Prisoner to U.S. Navy SEAL. So you escaped socialism. You looked its evil in the face, Drago, and came here to serve in our military heroically. Uh, what's your warning to Americans who want to import this garbage over here? Well, the first thing I think we need to remember that from booming economy and energy independence within two years, uh, we are begging tyrants for oil. We have uh, empty shelves in our grocery stores and people are struggling to pay for food and gas at the same time. But uh, this is the best example. The Venezuela is another example. And what is happening in Venezuela right now is, is a normal progression of socialist uh, failed state. It happens. The, the, what Maduro is trying to do right now is uh, normalize the failed economy. It is called uh, the sensitization and it is well known term and, and technique uh, uh, to people who lived in socialist state but it's fairly new in america and poorly understand by our citizens who did not experience socialism let's hope they never will drago they, they, when you look and you listen to kgb defectors and others they say you know we're never going to be able to defeat the united states from the outside in we have to get it from the inside out. And they've always used useful idiots in a country to take it down. Are we seeing that now with the left pushing this stuff and colleges pushing this socialist garbage to kids? Well, absolutely. You need to ask yourself, people need to ask themselves, how can I bring, how can somebody bring the United States down? Definitely not by force. Definitely there, there won't be uh, uh, Chinese soldiers landing on our beaches. It can be done only from within, from inside. And you can see right now the, uh, the, 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 the pushing of socialism on our country, the denigration of our family, our moral values, and our faith, the attack on our attacks on our faith and patriotism are something to really worry about, and we should be, uh, uh, should be very vigilant. Was socialism taught in the Bible? Acts 4, 32 through 35. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all, nor was there anyone among them who lacked. For all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet, and he distributed to each as anyone had need. Socialists, among whom are a growing number of Christians, seek to influence public policy so that society will become less capitalistic and more socialistic, and they see this as a means to live out the biblical passages just mentioned in Acts 4. However, None of the passages mentioned in Acts call for a socialist society or mandates a redistribution of wealth. The New Testament does not call for the church to embrace socialism within the church, much less in society at large. The donations given in Acts 4 were completely voluntary. The early church demonstrated a pattern of generous giving as the Lord had blessed individuals and as he led them to give to help the poor. There is no mandated redistribution of wealth and the example of the Jerusalem church was not meant to be taken as a model for national governments. In the book of Acts, the followers of Jesus gave to one another as anyone had need. But was this socialism? No. The key difference is the disciples gave away their possessions freely. And a socialist government owns and distributes property as they see fit. Jesus confronted the money changers and challenged believers to give to the needy. But would he support socialism? Increasingly, Americans think he would. In a recent Barna poll, 43% of Americans say socialism would be a good thing for the country. 51% believe socialism would be a bad thing for the country. The poll reveals a disturbing trend, and here's why. Socialism punishes virtue. Socialists want to distribute wealth to individuals according to their need, regardless of virtue. 
Socialism runs the risk of removing God-designed rewards and consequences. It can punish those who are hardworking by making them pay for those who are not, and it can reward those who aren't hardworking by giving them the fruits of another man's labor. The Bible teaches that anyone who refuses to work should be denied food, as we read in 2 Thessalonians 3.10. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. Socialism seeks to destroy marriage and family. What socialism seeks is for the government to replace the family. That way, it can indoctrinate children in its leftist way of thinking and remove them from any notions of God and religion. Leftists are proud supporters of gay marriage and abortion. There's nothing Christian about socialism, and there's absolutely no way Jesus would ever support it. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God! What if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.